Clinton Jaws. That's who I am. That's my name. Clinton Jaws. I'm outside. I'm coming in. Coming in from the outside. And as I get out of my truck, I'm, I, can, I hear the... Uh, the uh, wow. Wow. Did you forget what a siren is? I heard the sirens of a... Well, it's either a ambulance, but I think it was a cop car. Because I know my sirens. A couple of them were going off. And I remember thinking, it's not even a good story, but it just, I don't even know why I thought this, but I remember, I met, well, what I thought was, well, I bet you they're going to an alarm, which was an inside joke for me, right? Because we never did that. You don't go to alarms, code three lights and sirens. You don't ever do that. Check, check. And. One time I've done... Okay, so let me just explain myself if you're not a police officer. What was it again? What was the 10 code for an alarm? Damn it! It wasn't 1087, I know that. Uh, I can't remember. That's going to drive me crazy. I went to... I've, 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 I've been to... I don't know. I'm just going to throw a number out there. 2,000 alarms? And maybe one was an actual B and E. So people in their houses, they set up their alarm systems. And if it gets triggered, it's always tr triggered by an animal. If it gets triggered, the cops come eventually. This is something we don't care about as a police officer. We're never in a hurry to go to an alarm ever. Maybe we get to it at the end of the day. Th that's the kind of thing. That's, th that's the uh, importance of alarm. But me and Kevin Flood once went code three. Because we wanted to, I think we wanted to, we wanted to go for lunch. So we uh, drove there really quick. That was the only time in my career that I went lights and sirens to an alarm. And you know what's you know what's funny? I just I just remembered something. I'm in Clinton, BC. Okay, we we did a trip, a road trip to Quinnell one year. And I always wanted to go through Clinton, BC because the name reminds me of somebody. And because I was a new cop, I wanted to, I just wanted to see the outside of their police station. I don't know why. I had a big heart on about looking at other police stations or some reason. So strange. So we pull into the parking lot. And I just sat there and we're looking at the parking lot, looking at the police station. And I'm like, hey, maybe, you know, we'll move here one day. And uh, I'll work here. And out comes this police officer. He's running. I'm standing outside. I'm having a cigarette. He's running as fast as he can to his police car. And I'm like, oh, my God. Something, there must be, it must be a big deal. And I go, oh, you got an assault going on? What's going on? Erratic driver. <laughs> oh, man. We had, uh, I know I always say this, but I have had good watch commanders. One. Well, we had, uh, we had this. When I first started policing, I mean, she was out to lunch. This watch commander was out to lunch. And she didn't know how to do it. Not her fault. They shouldn't have put her in the position. She was from Ident. And I think she did something wrong in Ident. You could do things wrong in IDENT, and then you're no longer an IDENT member. And she comes over, and she tries to be our watch commander. And she's just... She caused so... She never called anybody for overtime. Other watches had seven, eight people on it. Sometimes we'd be working with three. And she's the third one, okay? Sitting at sitting at the, her desk. We, uh... She's in the inspector's office. Her and the inspector are chatting. We know this. We know this is happening. And an alarm comes in. 1071, I can't remember. Seven, no. Just an alarm. Uh, can I have a Duncan member for an alarm, please? And somebody grabbed onto it. And I swear to God, because this is why she would do it. She was sitting with the inspector of the police station. And over the radio... She goes, uh, Kevin, uh, let me know if you need me to call the dog. And after, at the end of the shift, we all talked about it. We're just like, what are you doing? 
How embarrassing. Call the dog for an alarm that's false because they're all false. And that was a boring story, but it just popped. It just, it has never left my mind. The poor lady had no clue. Some of the things I say you guys can't probably relate to if you're not a cop, but cops can. I wish I knew what code it was for an alarm. I'm in Langley. It's my first shift. And I, I think I've told this before. Come from Duncan. Busy. Busy. Averaged 45 to fi- 40 to 45 to 50 calls a shift. You go to you go to Langley, there's 16 constables, right? It was a, it was Langley was a cakewalk compared to <coughs> compared to Duncan. But I remember my first day shift. I leave, I leave, I hop on my car, I take off after briefing, and I'm driving down the road, and an erratic driver call comes in. Hey guys, we got we got some calls here on the queue. Some what do we got? We got an erratic. I'll take the erratic driver dispatch. And as I'm going to the erratic driver, and I know you never get the erratic driver, by the way. You're just kind of going, just for something to do, right? Just so you can say, en route, GOA, gone on arrival. Didn't find the erratic driver. You don't find them. You're not even really looking for it because by the time somebody calls in an erratic driver, they're gone. How do you find them? So I'm en route to the erratic driver. An alarm comes in. And I said, uh, dispatch, uh, I'll take that. Uh, I'll take that alarm. And sn- Snitty comes back on the radio. Uh... You, you're you already going to a call? And I'm like, oh, wow. They don't know that members can take two calls in a row. Especially one call that's false, right? The false alarm. And I went back on the radio. I said, neither are a big deal. You can give it to me. Big, long pause. They didn't know what to do. But they finally let me have it. Thanks, dispatch. And I don't know why this stuff... You would think I would remember funny, good moments. But I don't know why I don't. I just got a message from a a subscriber. He wrote a book. Funny stuff that happened during the job. And I was thinking the other day, like, what was so funny? I guess, I, I don't know. Maybe I just have a bad memory. But I can't really remember a funny times. Funny time. I mean, I tasered my buddy a bunch of times at night shift. Everything that was funny happened at two, three, four in the morning in the GD pit. Oh, well, that was funny. One lady in that's not that funny though. See, I don't even have any good funny stories. Guys, bear with me. I don't want to frustrate you about my channel. I know you see what's going on here, right? I'm trying. I've been on YouTube for a few years now, and and I'll admit I do not understand how YouTube works. I haven't cracked the code. feel like I've been doing it wrong. And I'm just starting to figure some things out, as you could probably tell. There's a bit of a difference. I'm not just posting cop stuff. I've been talking about Trudy a lot. I can't help it. I can't help but talk about him. So I've been post- I'm going to continue posting that along with my podcast episodes. And, and really, why wouldn't I talk about the guy? He used to be my boss. The RCMP, he's the RCMP commissioner. When Brenda Lucky was around, he picked Brenda Lucky. He told Brenda that the RCMP were racist. And then Brenda came out and said, you're right, they are. She initially said no. He had a talk with her. Convinced her. So he's actually the RCMP commissioner. So bear with me. I got a second channel that's very important to me. And I would really appreciate it if you guys subscribe to the second channel because I have to hit a thousand subscribers on that one. And it's Jaws, Clinton Jaws, short clips. I hadn't been on it for about five months, five, five months, and I'm starting to add things on there. I need to have two channels to separate things, okay? So if you could 
Go there and subscribe. I'd appreciate a subscribe on this one. Ooh, moat. Now what? I'll get another one. This is a dumb story, but we're at the casino the other night, okay? Every now and then we go up there to have a couple of drinks. It's really nice up there, the restaurant. It overlooks the, you know, those boxes, those casino boxes that people put coins into. And we're having some, we order some food, okay? And I, I like it up there, but the menu, it's just, there's just not, their, their wing, like, like we, we appetizers, their wings are no good. Don't fall asleep on me, okay? Their wings are no good. I'm like, I can't have the wings anymore. The soup, I'm not a soup guy. Bro, who wants Brussels sprouts? Really? I'm going to sit down and have a bowl of Brussels sprouts? No. One day I ordered meatballs. Oh, it's nasty. Some, some kind of, it was in some kind of soupy dish. It was just horrific. And so I'm like, I don't know what to get. I'm like, oh, it says nachos, lobsters, lobster nachos. And I went, that might be kind of good. I haven't had a plate of nachos in years. Maybe I'll try the nachos. And sweet waitress, so I'm not, I'm not beaten up on her, okay? But I got the menu out and I said, can I ask you about these nachos here? Is it, is it like a, uh, a regular plate of nachos? She goes, yeah. I said, so it's just a, a just regular plate of nachos. She goes, yeah, but with lobster. I don't like look at the woman. I'm like, hey, yeah, that might be good. Let's get that. She comes out with my food. It's not a regular plate. It's a tiny little baby plate. And it's oval. And there's no nachos on it. They're chips. Like a... Like somebody took a potato and thinly sliced it and then they deep fried it. And on top of it is fake crab meat. And the woman's like, don't say anything. I'm like, what the hell is this? It doesn't even taste good. Don't say anything to her. And I'm like, well, how can I, how can I not say anything? Right? And she comes over and, and she says, how is everything? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. I was, I was expecting nachos. And she goes, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's what you... I said, I don't see a nacho on the plate. And the woman's like, Clint, don't. Don't, Clint, don't. And I'm like, everything's fine. I kind of went red in the face because I felt bad. At it Because she's so nice, right? She goes, we could take it back. And no, don't take it back. It's fine. It's fine. But God, come on. Come on, and that shouldn't irritate me. But nasty. Why would anybody make a food like that? Take a potato and put some uh, lobster on it? Fake lobster? Why would you do that? And a little bit of cheese? I wanted to plate of nachos. She told me. It's nachos. There's no nachos. They don't even got nachos at the restaurant. But it says on the menu, nachos. Let's take a call. <coughs> You know, I could, I, the woman seen me do that on one of my videos. It was playing in the background on, the, on our TV. She put it on and she heard, she heard me burp. And I'm like, you know, I got a YouTube channel. And if I feel like burping, I'm going to burp. Yeah, I might lose a subscriber, but I'm burping. Feels good. I feel like I shouldn't have told you that casino, uh, casino story. And by the way, my YouTube channel has been killing it. And I don't want to jinx it, and I hope it continues. And let me tell you, it feels, it feels good, but it's a little scary to be honest with you. I just got a message from Paul Brack, lives in Calgary. And he's like, Clint, we grew up together across the alley, and say I just we randomly seen your YouTube channel, and that's like what? It's kind of freaky that he picked it up. Like, do I want that? I guess I do. Subscribe to my channel. I'm almost at 10,000. It's very important to me to hit the 10,000 mark. Very important. 
Then I'll be complaining that I don't have 100000 Thanks for your call. Hey, Clint. This is uh, Brendan out of Alberta. I called in, I think, like a year ago or something. I was telling you I was going through the application process. Uh, I actually did end up making it to Depo. And, uh, I do remember you. Thanks for calling, Brendan. You made it to Depo. Word up. Had a great time for the time I was there. Great time. I ended up getting COVID half of the way through. That um, missed so great. a bunch of tests, so I ended up getting back trooped. Oh, I had to go into isolation, which was awful. <laughs> and then uh, yeah. ended up fitting better with my new troop, which is nice. I've made some lifelong friends from that. New troop. Uh, got all the way to the last two weeks of training, and two weeks. unfortunately got sent home. It was due to the slow speed uh, cone course for driving. For whatever reason, uh, the high speed one could do it easy, could do that all day. When it came to the slow speed course, I would always just go a little bit too slow. I would. You went too slow? It was called slow speed. <laughs> I never took the slow speed cone course. Sounds really dumb. Who invented that? Like, what moron at Depo said, hey, let's, let's do a slow speed cone course. Did I do that? I didn't do that. Doesn't even make sense have like a clean run wouldn't touch any cones but would just be a bit too slow or i'd do something dumb like on the parallel park i'd go back just a little bit too far and just kiss a cone but Who the gives corporal a would see it and it'd be a dead run sorry uh, what the during corporal the practice do? i'd do something dumb like on the parallel park i'd go back just a little I'm bit too mad. far and just kiss a cone but the corporal would see it and it'd be a dead run uh during the practice i made it corporal's an idiot plenty of times during the practice it'd be, and it'd be a dead run uh during the practice i made it plenty of times is that not good enough but nope. for whatever reason after that like hour of practice i don't know if it was just mental fatigue or maybe nerves or something but uh yeah i would just make a mistake and you know make one more and that's it you have to have three clean runs so i uh ended up getting sent home uh, my corporals were not happy <laughs> had uh, the white shirts decided to send me home you know who sent you home the driving instructor sent you home that's who sent you home and your corporal shouldn't be happy and your corporal shouldn't have allowed it they should have did something not happy <laughs> had uh, the white shirts decided to send me home i had a superior on the midterm uh B2 fitness level consistently in the top three shooters of my troop. Sounds like I'm pumping my own tires here a little bit. But oh, I'm that's pretty good. You're smart. You can shoot. A, a pretty okay. do, you th do you not think I'd want you as a partner or any other cop? Well, you, you, <laughs> you're going too slow around the cones. See, this is this is the stuff that makes... That's a nightmare, man. Tires here a little bit, but I'm just trying to give a general idea that as a, that's a nightmare. pretty okay cadets and they sent me home for six months, told me to reapply. Six months. Uh, if I still want to in six months. So um, I have restarted my application. Mm. Uh, my buddies that made it through, they're in Alberta and Saskatchewan. So I'd love to get out to one of those places near them or if the same detachments that they're at would be pretty cool. thing that sucks too is you feel like you're a police officer now. But uh, the only thing I'm considering is potentially going like a city police or something instead but uh yeah i i think i still do want to go rcmp so i'll update you if i do end up making it through again and thanks for all the videos uh you're awesome keep doing what you're doing man well, they didn't help you <clears throat> if you still want to go rcmp then that's what you do you go back to depot if i could go back to depot and do depot again i would do depot again just that experience even though your experience is a goddamn nightmare. And what is what is wrong with the driving instructor? Figure it out, driving instructor. Don't be such a cop, man. You got to look at the cadet and go, you know what? He's going to make a good cop. Well, I'm not going to stop him. But he stopped you from becoming a police officer because of, why is there even driving? 
around cones. You know how stupid it is. They never used to have... They, they didn't always have driving there. I think I might be wrong there. You know, when I was in the, when I went to depot, if you, if you went, when you did your patrols, your patrol tests, and if you went up, they got nothing but one way, uh, one way streets in downtown Regina, right? I've never driven where in a place where roads were only one way. My biggest fear was going up the street the wrong way because they said if you do that automatic fail that scared the hell out of me and we're on our patrol drive i'm done i passed it there was three of us in the car and the instructor jean pierre was that his name french dude he's in the driving seat and we're not allowed to say anything and the instructor says make your next right so what does he do he puts on his tiktoker turning signal to turn up right he's out of light we're out of light if he turns right it's a one-way street that's a one-way street that he's about to turn right up and me and the guy behind in the back we're looking at each other and i i grab the seat belt and i start pulling it because i can't say don't turn so i start pulling it and he's looking jean is looking be like what the hell's going on I want him to wake him up. I'm trying to alert him. Don't go. Don't turn right. It doesn't work. Light turns green. He's about to turn right. The instructor said, you wouldn't want to do that. It's a one-way street. And he goes, I'll never forget his face. He goes, oh, yeah, that's right. That's what Jean did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He became a cop. He's probably a great cop. That instructor saved him because he realizes how ridiculous of a rule that is. And that piece of, that guy, that corporal in driving takes it way too seriously to fail you. Could have easily taken you aside. We had a, we had a girl in our troop and she, and I forget what, what it was, but we're, we're, it's driving. We're on a course and it was fast and you had to swerve. You had to go th- between two cones at a really fast rate. I aced it, of course. It took her 10 times. It t- and it started raining. And it got slippery. And there was two instructors. And they would not... If she didn't pass this, she's booted. And they let her take as many times as she could. And her name was Krista. My point is, they made sure she passed. You did it in practice. That's how dumb Depo can be. Well, a good shooter, but it's parallel parking needs a little work. Like, really? You're in a cop car. When do you parallel park? I never once parallel parked. I park wherever I want. I'm in a cop car. Parallel parking. You guys parallel parking out there? Your stupid little vehicles. The vehicles look so dumb. They don't even look like cop cars anymore. They're all driving around Port Alberni. I said to the woman, could you imagine how embarrassing driving that thing? And then you look at the city police and their their cop cars. They're damn awesome. You look at our cop cars. They're just like little pop trucks. Like beep, beep. I can't stand the looks of the cop cars now. And who made the decision? You know who made the decision. Lucky and her... Her little committee that was made up of 65% women. They sat around. They said, this is the vehicles that cops should be driving. I know I probably shouldn't be saying this. But somebody like that, some civilian members made the decision of who's going to be driving what cop cars. This is what we're going to make the cop car to be now. They're not even cop cars. You're not even driving a cop car. Thanks for your call and go back to depot. Because really... Taking the experience, even though it's a nightmare. I, you know, I hated Depo because I was so paranoid that I was going to fail it. So I'd never allowed myself to enjoy it. And yeah, you're going to go back and you're not going to enjoy it. But at the end of it, you're going to have something to talk about. Man, you're going to get good at shining boots, right? And when you graduate, I want you to come to my house. And I want you to teach me how to shine boots because I forget. We'll have some beers. We'll set up the video camera. We'll shine some boots together.
God, that works me up. Hey, Clint. City Cop Jason without a badge. Just wondering, uh, I've been a cop across two provinces and three different agencies. In over 26 years, I feel probably like you, like you've seen it all. Curious question, have you ever worked with a cop that was dirty, uh, that was involved in corruption or stealing from the bad guys or anything like that? I know I've had a few experiences like that um, where you learn about it later and you're like, holy shit, that was nuts. Um, and I got a pile of stories. I'd be curious if you had any and kind of if you if you knew at the time that they were dirty and um, yeah, just kind of your reaction or any stories that you can tell. I think it would be kind of in, uh, interesting to hear. Thanks, buddy. Bye-bye. I got to think about this for a second. No, not really. One of my troop mates. That's about it. One of my troop mates tied up his kid, made a dungeon downstairs, basically. Kid almost starved, something like that. It was horrific. And he went to prison for it. Became a cop. Didn't like how his kid was acting in school. So him and the wife. That's a, I don't know why, that's a horrific story. I want to get into that. Exhibit custodian mission. She had a gambling problem. She wasn't a cop though. She's an exhibit custodian. And I don't know, something like a hundred grand. Went to the casino with it. You know, the only real, and this ain't even dirty. I remember working with a police officer. He was a Vancouver cop and he became RCMP cop. And he was on the watch. I was just a constable in Duncan. And we got into an argument about something. And I can't remember what it was, but his words were at the end, towards the end of the argument. Oh, come on. You got to admit that, uh, I mean, sometimes you might give him an extra shot, right? And I'm like, what? I'm like, no, dude. No. Oh, you don't get angry? I'm like, no, I don't. I would... I had a, a guy spit all over my face, covered in boogers, I said to him. And when I released him from jail, I drove him home. <laughs> I just don't get angry. That's not, that's the job we have. You can't get angry and give an extra shot, an aggressive shot. That's not, I, I didn't even have the, uh... and I'm an angry dude, but when I was working, I mean, I felt like a superhero. I had goddamn pepper spray and a baton that I never used. I didn't use the pepper spray ever either. I had a taser and a gun and handcuffs, bulletproof vest. They do something to me. You spit in my face, uh, you're under arrest, and uh, you're, you're going to get charged with it and probably convicted. It never, I, I'd never seen red. Even with interviews, you're interviewing the worst people, right? Best thing you can do for the victim is become friends with them. Because they'll tell you everything. That's probably the only... Now it's not even dirty. Not even... This was... And I remember this was all before video cameras. And we're in the parking lot. Steve Folk, rest in peace, my best friend. We're in the parking lot. I think it was me, Steve, and Dave. And we arrested a uh, rat. And we're walking. We're walking in the parking lot to the patrol vehicle. And the guy's handcuffed. And he kind of did a little wiggle. Nothing major. And Steve drove him to the ground. And I'm looking at all the apartment windows that are looking at us. Cell phones back then didn't even record. And I... Uh, <laughs> We went back to the police station and I was a senior constable and towards the end of the shift, I said, Hey, can you come here, man? I'm like, dude, don't do that again. Okay. Eyes are on you. You don't know who has a camcorder. Okay. Don't do it. The guy's handcuffed. There's three of us. 
He's not going anywhere. And he told me after, like, thanks for the advice. Thank you. Thanks for your call. Well, I just listened to a three-minute conversation from Derek in Manitoba. It was awesome. It was amazing. I was commenting back and forth during the... Then at the end, he says, "Uh, don't put this on your podcast. I'm like, oh, man, come on, guys. Can you start with that? Don't end with it? (laughs) I'm glad you're doing well. Retirement. But honestly, there's something wrong with me because I've been thinking this past little while. Man, I would... I would love to do it again. I would, when you take time away, you all, you get better. You Your mind gets clearer and it fixes. And you're like, damn, I, I want to go back. And I don't. I want to be this way. What I've learned, I want to be this way now. I want to chill out. Maybe I'm losing it. He calls back and he tells me that he, he's really proud that when he was supervising, like, and his partners and every, everybody got home safe. Everybody got home safe. And that's pretty good. And I never thought about that. Because with me, the amount of people I supervised, I don't know, it's over 500. It's, it's a crazy number. Not one person got hurt on my watch. Or in the other sections that were working night shift. There was I don't there wasn't one police officer. I'm not talking about mentally, I'm talking about physically that didn't make it home or got hurt where they had to miss time off and I don't know, maybe that's got to be something, right? I think so. That's pretty good. Clint, Derek, aka D-Rock, call him back. And it's a good thing you're not smoking anymore, but I just had it backwards and yeah, you know, it's kind of good. Too bad you're not doing that anymore. Okay. Over and out. Bye. Yeah. Thanks for that. I got a, uh, nicotine pouch in the side of my mouth. You know, they ban nicotine pouches in BC, but I found a sketchy guy that delivered me some. They'll ban nicotine pouches, but meth and cocaine Legal for homeless people, you know? Well, legal. Goofy. We need to protect the children. Oh, are you really? From nicotine pouches? Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.